Hi, welcome back, and let's get right to it. The first video scope I'd like to show you how to read is the waveform. Now, at the moment, the output is giving you all three color channels, RGB. What I'm going to do is indicate that I only want to see the Y waveform, which represents luminance. I also think the signal is a bit bright, so I'm just going to lower it a little bit so that it's easier to read and come back to this. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, this is just a bunch of cluttered pixels. How is this supposed to make sense to a human being? And the thing is, its whole purpose is to make sense to a human being. This is a human readable graph. We have our bit depth scattered across the vertical line of the graph. The bottom of the graph indicates the darkest that a pixel can possibly be, pitch black. The top of the graph represents purest white. Anything in between is going to indicate grayscale. Now, the horizontal portion of the graph correlates exactly to the horizontal representation of the pixels in the image itself. So, for example, in this image, the first thing we see on the extreme left-hand side is this pole that's close to the camera. If we look at the graph, there's no data scattered anywhere on this section except for the very bottom where we see this tiny tail. And that's all of those pixels that are being thrown down into the shadows. Later on, the image becomes a lot more neutral, so then the pixels get scattered about. But then we come across some very distinct patterns. Here we have these boxes that just jump up and down and up and down. Well, that means that there's areas of the image that are suddenly becoming bright with these dark dividers in between. And when we look up at the screen, you can see that there are these windows. The wall area between the windows is lighter than the windows themselves which are undoubtedly acting as these dividers. As we move our eye across, we come across these two traffic lights. So then if we look at the graph, you can see these two sections where the luminance just plummets down to the bottom. That's those traffic lights. And then what is perhaps the brightest part of the image, which is the sky and the clouds in it, uh, comes in. And on the graph, that's demonstrated by this really wispy scattering of pixels in the lighter areas. I'm gonna get out of full screen view and I'm going to click on something else. Let's just read it together, like the last image. On the left, we just have some pavement. It's very bright. If we look at the graph, there it is. It's chunks of pixels all being distributed at the top of the graph. And then in between that, we have the blackboard, which all appears at the bottom of the graph. Uh, but there's white writing on the board, uh, and all these pixels are being scattered back to the top. So then, all right, what can we do with this information? Big whoop, we've learned how to read it. Well, let's say I wanted to scatter this luminance graph to achieve a certain look. Perhaps I want the darkest parts of my image to reach that zero point so that I want the shadows to be truly dark. I'll make sure that only my luminance is activated, and then I can grab the bottom of this curve and drag it across the bottom. And immediately my graph starts reacting and reaching down at the same time. Now to get a nice deep shadow, you don't necessarily have to crush this information into the bottom like that because you're going to be losing a lot of very valuable data from the midtones. So what's recommended is that you skirt that bottom line. And I can do the opposite for the highlights. Grab the top of the graph and push it in the opposite direction. I can now control the rest of the graph using points in the middle of the graph and push that down. And then I can undo some of that by grabbing the top half of the midtones and pulling those out. And you can see before and after how much the graph changes. So another way I could use this waveform tool is for matching clips to one another. I know the amount by which I've separated the luminance on this clip, so now I can go to a clip in a different environment, and I know that my highlights were right under the top line. I know that my shadows were just barely touching the bottom line. And I know that the graph is more or less staying under the 768 area, but is spread out pretty evenly underneath it. So then I can do the same thing for this section. I can bring it up and get a bit more brightness in so that it's not as clumped. And now I'll find that I have a better match between these two, even though I had to use different levels of configuration on the curves to achieve it. All right, next video, we'll be looking at the RGB parade. I hope you found this useful, and until next time.